Acts chapter 26, verse 12 says, while thus occupied as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday, O king, along with the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goals. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And of course, we know this is the apostle Paul. Before his name was changed, he was known as Saul of Tarsus. And he was given authority to go around and kill Christians, persecute them, lock them up, just because they uh, were considered to be in, in uh, a disagreement Green. with the word of God. Um, because they didn't uh, honor the word, uh, I'm sorry, because the, the Jewish leadership did not honor Christ as the, the coming King of Kings and Lord and Lord, Son of God that he proclaimed himself to be. So they were persecuting the Christians thinking they were serving God. So Paul had been given authority to go around killing them, locking them up, all of that. So here he is now having been converted having been led to Christ by Christ himself. You can't get a better invitation than that. The Lord Jesus knocked him to the ground and spoke to him. And so he says to him, um, you're fighting against me, Paul. And then Paul realizes, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm messing with the wrong one. So if you pick up verse 15 in chapter 26 of Acts says, so I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. And this is what I want you to focus on for today. For I have appeared to you for this purpose. What's the purpose? Number one, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. And I want to zoom in right there because as part of our ministry, our calling, our purpose, as Jesus has indicated, is to minister and minister simply means serve and be a witness to the things he has done. I have found the more I make my boast in the Lord in witnessing, then the more I see the manifestation of the Lord in my prayer life. Of course, when we think about what our job is, what our purpose is, as Jesus said. I think of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm going to hop into verse 18. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Somebody's like, well, I don't know what my calling is. I don't know what my ministry. How about this? You have been given a ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean, Lord? He said, that is verse 19, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What's the essence? Your job, your ministry is to let people know that God is reconciling himself to the world through his son. The sin in our lives separated us from God. You know, we pray for somebody to get healed. What if that turf, think of that soul as turf, because that's what this is about, a battle for soul. What if that turf has been dedicated to the devil? When I say that, what if that person has not chosen Christ? Well, that means the devil's been reigning in their life. And the devil don't always want to leave when you say be healed. He's like, nope, this is my turf. But if we can let them understand who they are in Christ, that if we can lead them to know that their sins are forgiven in Christ, that they can be reconciled to God. Now we're dealing with a clean vessel. Now we can pray and see the healing manifest. 
So I'm encouraging you to not just pray, but to apply these principles that you are a minister of reconciliation. Everywhere you go, every person you pray for, every person you encounter, let them know you've been sent as God's ambassador to let them know their sins are forgiven in Christ Jesus. You have been called to such as this. This is not a unique calling. This is for all of us. You have a ministry. You might be a hairdresser. Guess what? Tell your clients. You might be the grocery store clerk. Tell the people why you bag their groceries. You might be a, a teacher. You know, whatever your position is not the issue. Your purpose is the same no matter which one you've been called to do it through. So today I want you to understand your ministry is the ministry of reconciliation. And when you get people reconciled, now their soul, their spirit, everything is tuned into God. It's so much easier to pray and see God manifest in that person because they're of like spirit with you. They, they can come in agreement with you. There's no fellowship between light and darkness. But when they have come in and surrendered their heart to Christ, now you can be on one accord. Now they can walk with God along with you. And now you can pray. And it's so much easier to see healing manifest when you have a clean vessel, a person whose heart has been made whole in Christ because they've been reconciled to God. And what's the second thing he said? Look at Acts chapter one, verse eight. He said, I've called you not only to be to minister. What does he say to minister? The things which I've shown you and the things that I will reveal to you and be a witness for those things. Look at Acts chapter one, verse eight. When the disciples were up in the upper room, just as Jesus ascended back to heaven, he told them, wait on me right here. In other words, I have something for you. I'm going to give you a gift. That gift is the Holy Spirit. So you need to tarry here. And that's why some people got the notion that we have to stay at the altar and just tarry and wait for the Holy Ghost. That ain't scripture, but that's a whole nother thing. Bottom line is they hung around waiting for the outpouring of the Spirit. And look at verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Does it say I'm going to get power so I can have goosebumps? No. Power so I can speak in tongues? That might happen, but that's not the reason. Power so I can run around the church, fall out? Nope. What does he say? And you shall be witnesses to me. So he gives us the power of the Holy Spirit so we can witness for him. How do we witness? We may witness by laying hands. We may witness by preaching, all those things. But the point is, that's why he empowered us so we could be his witness. The spirit comes to guide us, to lead us, to teach us. And he said, where will we be witnesses? In Jerusalem, right there where you live. Jerusalem was the city where they were planted. And in all Judea, that's the region. And Samaria, now we all at the state level, nation level, and then to the ends of the earth. So everywhere we go, every place we reach, God has called us to be his witness. So go back to the original scripture. What did he tell us? I called you to minister. I called you to be my witness. And what am I witnessing, God? I'm witnessing about the things which you have seen. What have you seen? You've seen God heal the sick. You've seen God uh preach the word through you or through others. You've seen God bring deliverance to people's lives. You've seen people get saved. You've seen a lot. You've seen in your own life where God made a way where you didn't see a way, saved your wretched soul. You've seen a lot. You've seen the word of God and all the truths and the promises of God. All of these are things that you can witness about and, and minister to others. And then you position that person with a heart that's open and seasoned and and surrender to God, whew, now you can pray. It's like a, a, a much more easy way to be able to pray than when you got the fight in the spirit with the enemy who is occupying that turf. So does that mean everything's going to be perfect and willy-nilly, everything easy, meaning that poof, they're going to see a manifestation immediately? It may work that way. It may not. But it still makes a big difference when we're talking about a clean vessel that's been dedicated to Christ versus one that's still surrendered to the flesh and to the enemy of our soul. So first things first, let's do what God purposed us to do. Let's minister and let's witness to the things he's given to us and shown us in his word, in our lives, and in the lives of the others that we know. 
that's when you walking in God's purpose. That's when your heart and your spirit are in agreement with God. That's when you can pray down heaven to earth for real. That's when you see the power of God manifesting like never before. I was just talking to one of my spiritual daughters about this. And she was talking about how when she was sick and the enemy had her so on the rope, she was giving up hope. She said, I felt like my literally my life was ebbing away. And she said, the spirit spoke to her and said, there is more in you. You got something the world don't have. And she said, she just reared up and said, Father, get me out of here. She said, two hours later, they came and took her to another hospital. She got the best treatment she had ever had. And God began to turn that thing around. There's something in you. He's called the Holy Spirit. That's God arising in you. And the God in you is what God wants to use to minister and to witness for him throughout the earth. And through that, and ushering in to his presence allows you to pray at a whole nother level. So I'm sharing with you, don't neglect one for the other. Yes, we're going to pray. Yes, we're going to call out to God. Our purpose is also to minister and to witness it to his word. Then the rest flows easier from there. So that's our assignment. That's our purpose. Let's fulfill what God has called us to do. And now we're going to do just what we came to do, and that's to pray in accordance with God's will. So who are you witnessing to? Who are you trying to lead to Christ? I'm praying today for you to have a boldness in your witness and a boldness in your prayer life and in your sharing of the gospel uh, so that people can come to know that he has reconciled himself to us no longer count our sins against us in Christ Jesus. If you haven't put that name on the prayer wall, mine are Randy and Kathy. They're my neighbors. I'm asking you to touch and agree with me that they would come to know Christ, that God will give me the unction and the opportunity, the right circumstance where I can say, hey, come to know Jesus. And I've had conversations here and there, but they kind of show the resistance. So I believe God will prepare the way as we continue to pray. All right. Unknown caller. Forgive me. Let's begin to pray now in the name of Jesus. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you in advance, God, for the names of the people who are on this prayer wall. We thank you in advance that you're doing a work in each of their lives. We believe by faith, God, that you have given us a ministry, that you have called us to such a time as this to pray and to be your mouthpieces in the world, to be the people, God, that you have called us to be, to be the ministers and the witnesses that you have called us to be. Help us, Almighty King, to live up to the purpose for which you created us. Help us to walk according to your divine will. Help us to be obedient to what you've called us to do. God, I pray right now for Randy and Kathy that you draw them by your Holy Spirit, that you open the opportunity for me to share your with my witness with them of your word, oh God, that they will come to know that their sins are forgiven in Christ Jesus, that they can be reconciled to you, Almighty King. I touch and agree with every other person crying out on their behalf. Let them be made whole. God, I'm asking you to put a hedge of thorns around them, that they will be Oh, God, pressed in to turn not to the left nor the right, but to turn to you, O oh King, and have an open heart and come asking, what must I do to be saved? In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, God, I pray. God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm coming in agreement yet still with Melissa Grant concerning her mom. God, that those arm, that arm and nerves in her arm will be made whole in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. As Melissa, God, touches her mom with her very hands, as she lays hands on her mom, God, let your supernatural power manifest and make the connection from heaven to earth that she will be healed is my prayer. And God, in the name of Jesus, I touch and agree with Beverly Archer concerning her sister, God, 
that you would do a work, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would make it so, Father, that what you have ordained for her life will come to be, that the enemy would not be able to cut in on her in Jesus' name. I believe you are a heart fixer. I believe there's nothing too hard for you, Father, in Jesus' name. I continue to plead the blood of Jesus over her brother, her sister-in-law, her brother-in-law. God, cancer is beneath you, God. Your word says your name is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. We command cancer to bow down in Jesus' name. Bow down in the name of Jesus in their body. God, we cry with digging this hands. Thank you, you God that her cousin Gladys is doing better and we still believe in you for complete healing in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Bless you, Lord God, even as we touch and agree uh, concerning uh, Sabrina's cousin uh, Beverly Finley, believing by faith, all will be well. We touch and agree, God, concerning Henry and Kimberly's salvation. God, that you would let them hear the gospel that they would have ears to hear, even now, open deaf ears, that they might hear your word and be healed. Delivered from drugs, delivered from alcohol and domestic violence. God, in Jesus' name, bless Francis and bless this situation, that peace will reign. Bless, oh God, Ruth Shaw, bless her heart, touch her kidneys and her lungs, oh King. Bless her and be with her, strengthen her and guide her. Help her, oh God, to walk according to your divine word. Be healed in Jesus' name. We speak healing and life over every part of her being. We know that nothing is too hard for you. What the enemy meant for evil, God, you are capable and well able to turn around for her good. God, give her health and strength right now. Give her peace in her body and peace in her mind. In the name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you. Hallelujah, 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 God. We praise you and we honor you, Father. Hallelujah. God, we bless you and we thank you. We touch and agree with Melissa Grant. Hallelujah, God. We believe by faith, Father that you will do what she's asked for, Lord, that you will bring healing completely in every part of her body. We give you the praise for what you already done. We believe, believe in, hallelujah, hallelujah, that any and everything attacking her body, if there be anything else, Lord, will be made whole. Bless, oh God, Geraldine, Reverend Michelle's cousin, be likewise made whole. We plead the blood of Jesus over David Barr, over his life, over his mind, over his heart, that alcohol and smoking would be repulsive to him, that God, the devil, would have no uh, influence over him. We plead the blood of Jesus over his shop. We curse the witchcraft shop next to his, and we believe, God, even now you can cause it to go out of business cause every person that would normally reach out to them to be no longer interested in Jesus' name. God, we pray, Father, that you would bring healing even to the West where there's raging fires and raging COVID-19 Delta variant. Be the healer, God, that they need right now. Father, we bless you and thank you and ask you to continue to comfort the Scott and Case and families, Lord God. We bless you. We thank you, God. Continue to comfort Carol Hill, Father. Be with her and her family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We continue to plead the blood of Jesus over the hearts and minds of those who are struggling with their sexual identity. Give them clarity. Give them wisdom. Give them guidance by your word, by your will, by the people in their midst who will lovingly guide them according to your will. Lord, we touch and agree, God, with Antoinette J. for complete reconciliation and restoration in her family. Bless Corey, Ginger, AJ, Lord God, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Bless all those who uh, Psalm 107 too, has been able to share your gospel with. In the name of Jesus, we lift up Chrisette Frazier's cousin, Tony Simpson, that you would do what only you can. You are the great physician. Bring healing in your wings, Almighty King, and make her whole, we pray. Bless Arlene's friend, Yvette. 
Palamas. We plead the blood of Jesus over her. We believe God by faith that it is well. We continue to plead the blood of Jesus over Jamal. Break every chain in his life. Restore hope. Restore strength. Restore a sound mind that he would be just like the man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who even was found in the tomb one way, one moment, but then the next minute he was dressed and sitting at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. Let it be so that Kevin and Jamal and Chris, they would all be clothed and sitting at Jesus' feet in their right mind, no longer bound by drugs, no longer bound by any other form or addiction. We thank you for the praise reports, O King. Bless, O God, Sharon and Maddie Sullivan's friend. Be with her, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We continue to give praise and thanks for Sabrina McIntyre. Continue to believe you, God, for breakthrough. Continue to believe that there's nothing too hard for you, that you're working it out according to your divine will and for her life. God, I plead the blood of Jesus for every other name that's on this prayer wall. I thank you by faith that you have heard us, that you're doing a work in us, that you are bringing it to pass, God, that whatever they stand in need of, you will bring it and turn it around, that you would make a way where they don't see a way, that you would help them in their hour of need. I ask all of this in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Muted. Amen and amen and amen. Unmuted. Bless you, Father. Father, we pray right now that you would touch and move in Margaret Butler's life. Bless her, God, as she celebrates another day of birth. Bless her union as she rededicates her marriage. We pray, praise you for her. We pray your blessings over her, over a hallelujah, Aisha, um, Aisha, Aisha <laughs> Alexander, Christopher Bunn, Deaconess Hines, Jacqueline Bond, Sabrina Sproul, Ann Smith, Vernon Allen, Patricia Williams. We plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. Gail Wright, cover her by the precious blood of the Lamb. Cover each of them. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. Over Antoinette Johnson, God, be with her strength and her God. Each and every one, Michelle, Lord God, bless her. Hallelujah. Bless her mom. Bless her cousin. Oh, God, my sister, Benita Richardson-Smith, cover her by the precious blood of the Lamb. Melissa Granite, my sister, Beverly Moses, John and Patty Bagley, Lord God, cover them by the blood. Oh, God, even whatever it is that's going on with Mary Michelle's mom's computer, Lord, you are greater than whatever it is. God, we bless you and we thank you. Bless baby girl forever, Mika, Lord God, and Whatever they stand in need of, cover them, Melissa Grant, cover them precious by the precious blood of the Lamb. I'm believing you for a breakthrough. I feel an anointing that God, you're saying as we pray, you are going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask and think. I'm consecrating this week to you. Even now, I pray others will turn down their plates, seek your face like never before. I pray you bless Joanne McDonald like never before. Cover them, keep them, guide them, fill them with your spirit. I'm believing you, God, that you have a great work in store for them. Bless Marianne Kenton today. I plead the blood of Jesus over her life. Bless Janice Smith and Trudy Heard today. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. God, I believe you that there is nothing too hard for you. I plead the blood of Jesus over Sharon Stowe today. I'm believing you, God, that the things that are being called out right now, you are going to blow some people's minds this week. You're going to show up and show off in the name of Jesus. I decree it so by your spirit, Lord God. May it be so that the things that have been laid before you will come and come quickly, God. Show up and show that you are still sovereign in all the earth, that nothing is too hard for you. God, that you would save the lost souls, that you would move in a miraculous way, that you would bring healing as only you can. I believe you, and I'm trusting you, and I'm praising you, and I'm thanking you now in advance. God, I'm asking for a great work. Show off today, Lord. Show up today. Show up in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Before we go, we always want to give you the opportunity to say yes to the Lord. I have such a burden in my soul for you today. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, 
I believe God set you up today. This is a setup so that you can come to know him. It's his desire that you would not perish. What does that mean? God's will is that nobody goes to hell. There's really only two destinations, heaven or hell. And some of us are living in hell right here on earth because we don't know Christ. All of us go through difficulties, but I can tell you this, it's much better on the side of being with God as you go through them than it is with being without him. So if you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you never say yes to him, this is the time to do it. How do you do it, somebody saying? Very simple. You pray and you invite him into your life. I know that seems too simple, but that's the reality. He said, if I believe in my heart and confess in my mouth, with my mouth, my faith in him, then I will be saved. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I want you to repeat each word and believe it in your heart. And believe me, God is going to show up. So repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take control of my life. I repent of my sins. I'm turning to you. Fill me with your spirit so I can live a life that's pleasing to you. Thank you for dying for every one of my sins. Thank you for saving my soul. Amen and amen and amen. And God's word is true. If you prayed that prayer today, you're saved. Put this day down as your spiritual birthday and remember it forever. Because from now on, you're going to mark time and see what God does in your life. There's a celebration in heaven. God said when one person repents, there's a party thrown in heaven on your behalf. And I'm celebrating with you. I'm anticipating that God is going to do great things in your life. Shoot me an email and say, hey, I gave my heart to Christ. R-E-V-L-E-T-T-I-E-C-A-R-R, Rev Letty Carr at whosoeverbelieves.org is where you can send an email. And I promise you, I will respond. I want you to check out our website, whosoeverbelieves.org. It's a great opportunity to post, to share, to learn, to grow, fellowship, laugh, all things you can do on any other social media platform. And we are there encouraging one another. It's a growing community. I invite you to be a part of it. 